What is real? How do you define real? You can't jump into cash. Cash is trash. What do you do? You get out. After a year of brainstorming, planning, and creating, Scott and Mallory Silby launched Shamari in mid-2020 with their flagship product, the Shamari Bitcoin card game. The genesis, the genesis of Shamari was a recognition of a, of a severe gap in fun, educational Bitcoin products for all ages. As a family with a then infant, Scott and Mallory wanted to be able to make it easier for her to be able to jump down the Bitcoin rabbit hole as early as possible. Just like there are no barriers for anyone around the world to use the Bitcoin network, individuals of any age should be able to start learning about it. Their mission going forward with Shamari is simple. Scott and Mallory will continue making fun, educational Bitcoin products for all ages. When someone anywhere in the world is looking to teach a 5, 15, or 80-year-old Bitcoin about Bitcoin, they want, to be the e they want to be the go to resource to help make that process fun and engaging. So keep your eyes out as their product line grows because this little family is just getting started. Scott and Mallory Silby, welcome to the Bitcoin Matrix. How are you guys? Oh, good. Thank you so much for having us. Happy Friday. Yeah, happy Friday. I'm super excited to talk to you guys. The game looks super exciting and the book is just kind of a, a delight. Um, so I'd love to Thank get you. into it. Uh, I'd love to get to know you guys a little bit better. Mallory, maybe we could start with you. What, sure. what is your vocation and, and what do you do uh, yeah. you know, aside from building this beautiful product line? Yeah, I'd love to talk to you about that. And actually, it intertwines quite nicely with the product line. So um, my passion and my career has always been about helping people. And I've done that in a few different ways. I'm currently working as a counselor, and I specialize in high school students with disabilities, um, autism, learning disabilities, blind, deaf, any type of disability. And I help them transition out of high school into whatever it is that they want to do after high school. Um, so it, you know, it empowers them to do and be successful and however they deem success. And it intertwines actually quite nicely with this because my passion for helping people, um, we're, we're helping people through the Sean Marie products, um, find freedom, educate themselves about Bitcoin, have conversations with their family members that they probably didn't have before. And then we provide, you know, the book and the, the card game to give them tools to start facilitating those conversations. And if nothing else, even if they don't like Bitcoin, it's just fun. The game is mm -hmm. fun and it feels good to do something that, you know, allows families to sit around together and have a good time. Yeah, that sounds awesome. What is maybe some of the most rewarding moments, uh, you know, helping people find out what they want to do vocationally, maybe after their learning or schooling? Yeah, well, every single, um, every client I work with is rewarding in one way or another. So one of the unique things about it is whether they choose to go on and get, you know, a four-year degree, or they choose to get a certificate, or they choose just to enter the workforce. It doesn't make a difference to me. It's whatever they deem a success. And that's mm -hmm. what makes me feel mm -hmm. good. Right. So, you know, some, some people they're ready, they're ready to exit high school. They, you know, college isn't for them because it's certainly not for everyone. And they start working and they feel good and they build self-esteem and they're able to, you know, live on their own and, you know, do adulting, whatever it is that may, that may be. But again, you know, it intertwines so nicely because Bitcoin provides people the same type of freedom. You know, you don't, maybe college isn't for you, but Bitcoin in the long term can allow a lot of freedom that, you know, um, you may not have without it. Yeah, I, I do agree that college, I don't think is for everyone. I think it's a bit oversubscribed and sort of the sub subscription system that's happening now. Um, but Scott, I'd love to turn to you a little bit. I think your career has sort of been very similar, or at least some similar objectives, but maybe started out a little differently. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like what you do over at Journeys? Yep. Yeah. So um, for the past 13 years, um, I've worked at a local ed tech company here in San Diego, um, our, for the past, I guess, uh, probably seven, eight years, it's been focused on the, the Journeys Map product, as you're referencing. Um, and so it's a, a combination of those years that really helped us ultimately get into to Shamari. But essentially, um, working in that, that ed tech realm, becoming familiar with both the, the positives and the many 
negatives of the traditional schooling system. Um, obviously, there's there's uh, hiccups along the way, no matter what, whether it's your uh, learning disabilities, children, kids like Mallory's talking about, or just uh, people who are going through and don't really know what to do. There's many gaps. And so with Journeys Map, we try to really pro provide those pathways for individuals to route themselves um, from point A to point B, literally using a map. So it's like using Google Maps. Um, you know, you're in 12th grade today. Um, you're trying to get into the field of cybersecurity. You know, what certifications are out there? What degrees are out there? What industry um, uh, partners are in my area? It's really trying to bring everything into one ecosystem and help people navigate, like Mallory was saying, and like you were mentioning, college isn't for everybody. And that's going to be more and more of the case as we move forward with things. Um, and so it's kind of that, that ed tech background uh, that I've had. And then even before that, um, prior to that, I was in the accounting industry on the audit side of things. And so a mixture of kind of ed tech combined with audit, which, you know, combines verifiability and um, trust and, and, and those aspects really circle back around to, you know, to Bitcoin and all the things we, we know and love about it as well. So it's been a nice uh, cohesion of, of synergy from my professional side of things. Yeah. I, from what I gather, I mean, Journeys is sort of like an educational powerhouse. I think you guys have even gone on sort of visits to DC uh, to be noted, kind of have like awards or sort of things like that. Maybe we could touch on that. But also, it, it's interesting. Well, like my mom taught uh, public uh, public school, but special education for about 20 okay. years. And then 10 years after that, she ran homeless shelters on the behalf of, of New York City schools to help uh, mostly single mothers have a uh, shelter and help their children get to and from school. My father was also a public school teacher for 30 years in New York City. Wow. Um, and I started off at public accounting uh, nice. and have been a corporate accounting consultant for about 20 years. So I kind of wonder like, what, what is your, your rabbit hole story? Did you guys yeah. go down the rabbit hole together? <laughs> um, we didn't. Yeah. Um, although we're married, yeah, we, so. we forgot to mention that, but we are, we are married. <laughs> Um, but our, our Bitcoin story is a bit different. Do you want to go? Yours is yours is first. first. So do you want to go first? Yeah. So uh, it was together, but also separate. Yeah. So we were married the whole time it happened. Um, the first time I remember hearing about Bitcoin was probably 2013 or so. Um, it was on a local news story about the first Bitcoin ATM coming here in San Diego. Um, but that was as far as I took it at that time. Uh, but it, then it was, you know, 2017, 2018, the last time the, uh, the big run up happened, um, caught my attention, started learning more, um, started talking to Mallory about, hey, you know, there's this and that. Obviously, you go down the, the Bitcoin and the, the non-Bitcoin angle as well. So you get, get sucked and consumed like many people did. But the nice thing was um, after the, the dust settled, you know, really, it was Bitcoin solely that kept keeping my attention learning more, reading the white paper, um, obviously more and more podcasts and articles that between now and then have really become even more robust. So probably about, um, I would say two or so years into that, 2019 or so is when I said, you know, I, I want to be involved in the space and somehow, um, how can that happen? And then going back to kind of the education uh, brain, mm -hmm. uh, that I was like, okay, well, there's all this content being created but there really isn't much of anything for kids. You know, there's a few there, at the time, I think it was really just the Bitcoin rabbi book um, that was out there. And so um, being able to figure out that niche is kind of where the, um, the world's collided. And when, like we said, uh, Mallory was supportive the entire time of us kind of starting to invest in Bitcoin and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but it wasn't, and she can pick it up from here until the, the Shamari side of things came to play that really her, her true, I guess, rabbit hole story started. So I'll let you take that part. Yeah. Um, yeah. My Bitcoin journey is really kind of when Shamari started, like Scott said. So around 2017, I would say that Scott started really bringing up the, bringing up Bitcoin. Um, we started investing in it, but even then, you know, if I'm being really honest, it wasn't, um, it wasn't all that interesting. Like I, I did find it interesting, but I wasn't all into it. Like I am now. Um, but when the conversation and the research started happening about kid products and how do you start teaching kids um, about Bitcoin that we realized there really wasn't anything out there. And we're big believers um, in, in how we parent, um, that we parent our child and we try to teach her, you know, real life things. And we try to give her a lot of credit that she probably can understand things that maybe other people wouldn't believe that children can understand, right? And I think this kind of branches into many other conversations about Bitcoin, but um, 
kids are, are probably going to adapt to Bitcoin a bit earlier than, uh, yeah. than even adults are easier. So we knew that we wanted to start having these conversations with, uh, with our daughter. Um, but that's when the journey really began because that's when I started doing my own research about Bitcoin. That's when I became really mm -hmm. interested in, um, and excited by it. Awesome. So, uh, I'm kind of curious, uh, did it change maybe either one of your perspectives on your, your vocations and maybe, uh, not necessarily like trying to orange pill people at work or something, but like your views on education or your views on college or, or even what people should pursue vocationally. I would, I would say that, um, almost the reverse in some ways for me, because by working in um, on the Journeys product for a number of years, being involved in conversations about kind of the, the alternative pathways um, that are out there and that maybe even lingo that most people don't understand, but that means, you know, the certifications or the non-traditional pathways to get from point A to point B and into the industry, um, seeing the amount of change that was coming in um, uh, the space of education, when you then transferred that over to kind of the Bitcoin interest, and also seeing the change going on related to, to money and saving, um, I think it made it more natural. Like, okay, yeah, you know, money and education really are the, the last two things to go through radical change. Um, you know, we've obviously seen uh, TV, movies, you may know from Blockbuster to Netflix, the old stories. Right, it's, right. All, it's all changed except education and money. Mm. They, they're the slowest and it's understandable why. Um, so it's kind of like, well, yeah, I, I see the transition happening in education. So why can't the same thing happen um, on the, the monetary side of things, as well as just the simple fact, like Mallory's alluding to, kids are gonna be the quickest to adopt. Um, if anybody who thinks that, you know, we're only gonna get less mm -hmm. digital from here on out, they're crazy for lack of better words. So, you know, just have that low time preference, see where everything's going in the long term. That's where you wanna put your, your attention to and kind of that's the, the game to play in our minds. Yeah. So how do you guys make a card game? <laughs> uh, Good question. It, yeah. I mean, where do you start? Uh, yeah. like, And, and what yeah. was that process like? Well, neither one of us have a background, as we already discussed our backgrounds, neither one of us have a background in creating products and taking them to market, at least uh, physical <laughs> products, I should say. So it started off with the, you know, really just kind of like a side passion interest that we were going to do. Uh, we started with the card game. Um, we enjoy playing card games ourselves and we wanted to create that type of like family fun, but the beginning versions were really quite terrible. <laughs> there were iterations. Really uh, exactly. There were lots. Yeah, exactly. They were really not good. Um, but we, you know, we sorted it out. And then once you, you know, once you have an idea of what you want to make, and then it's, you know, finding card stocks, finding vendors, working with um, artists. And we've been really lucky. We really enjoy working with the artists that we currently work with. Um, she did both Good, good Night Bitcoin and the Sean Marie card game. And then it's just working with manufacturing and manufacturing over COVID has been a whole um, extra extra challenging, but here we are and it, it all worked out pretty well. And then, I mean, also on top of that, there's just because it's the two of us, there's website building and marketing and podcasting, and we're boxing everything in our kitchen table every night, you know, before bed, just the two of us packaging it up. So it's a very homegrown business, but we've definitely learned quite a lot along the way. Yeah. We had, like Mallory mentioned, zero experience uh, creating a physical product, zero. I had never you know, personally built the website myself. We did it that all you know, on our own. Um, we've done zero paid marketing, um, just kind of grassroots homegrown, which is the way we wanted it. We wanted yeah. to be able to um, be something that, you know, if you're interested in, great. You could, you know, whether it's just you or you start telling other people, you know, that's kind of the way we wanted to go at it. Obviously, as many people know, you have the Bitcoin community is once they see you're, you're passionate about something and something for good, um, you know, they're open to hearing what it is and and supporting um, and kind of to your uh, question about kind of how it started, neither, you know, the game itself, for those that don't know, kind of centers around um, the concept of Bitcoin mining. And so um, the, the trigger in the back of our heads when it actually kind of was like, oh, the aha um, was if you take the mi process of Bitcoin mining and boil it as simple as possible, there's two things, there's a nonce and a target. If those two things match up for lack of better words, the next block is mined, you get a reward, on we go. Um, that connection and that simplicity 
is what drew the brain back to, oh, that's, that's really the game of memory. And so that's really how the game is played, where you're using your mental energy to remember uh, a nonce and a target, match those things up. So once that was really the aha um, that happened for us related to the game, to really say, okay, now we got we got that center stone. The rest was really, okay, what what does it look like? And, you know, we came up with the monster characters. Mm-hmm. Um, how, like you said, how do we manufacture it? That's a whole another ordeal. Um, how do we build a website? How do we start shipping it out right. shipping it around the world? Um, which is a whole other messy circumstance that takes forever and costs too much, but it is what it is. We, we can, <laughs> you know, until, until we're as big as Amazon, but there's only so much we can do about that. Right. Awesome. Uh, let's get into the game a little bit more then. Like how did the game get its name? Uh, I'm kind of figuring out a little bit, but how did it get its name and, and what is a nonce and a target in, yeah. in, in the framework of the game? Yeah. So uh, for those that, <laughs> In the video, I can show you some pieces of it. Obviously, it's easier when you're actually playing. And like uh, we were talking about before I came on, anybody interested, there's a how to play video on the website. But uh, the name comes from, so the name is S-H-A-M-O-R-O-Y. Um, so the S-H-A comes from SHA-256. So that's the algorithm used um, in Bitcoin mining. And then the MORI comes from the end of the word memory, which as I okay. mentioned before, is, is where the, the game concept comes from. So it was just a really a, a mashup of, of those two things to, to create the name, which has worked out well for us, catchy and kind of plays off of the two, two concepts. Um, so there's the nonces and the targets. So let me find there's one nonce and a, oops, there we go. So essentially if you can visualize all the cards, there's 11 of each, um, the nonce cards. So here we go at the back. Each of them have these fun little Bitcoin characters on them. Okay. They're all going to be laid down on the table, just like you're playing memory. Um, And then there's a stack of target cards. They have the identical characters on them. They're going to flip Mm. one over. So that's our, that's our target that we're trying to match with the nonce. Um, Player's going to roll a dice, assuming it lands on one of the mining characters. They get to play. They're going to flip over a nonce card. If those two things match up, great. You mine that, you mine the next block. So then you can put down uh, the first block, which in this case would be block at zero. That's one. The objective is to go from the Genesis block, block at zero, to 10. Each time that's done, a player will re- win a reward. So the player with the most rewards at the end of the day, uh, once we get to 10, is the quote unquote winner. But one of the nice byproducts of the game is that other things can happen. So the t- chain can actually get attacked. If at the end of the day, the attack cards get longer than the chain, everybody loses. And so it really shows how the process of mining in real life is both individual. We're all competing to mine that next block, get a reward, but it's also collaborative. And we're all trying and that we're all trying to protect the network at the same time. And so it's those little stories that I know for both of us, mm-hmm. as we hear p- people of all ages, but in particular parents, when they come back and say, you know, my kid's usually hyper competitive, but once we played it twice, he realized, oh, you know, just because my sister gets more rewards we actually all win because we're all getting rewards at the end of the day. Um, and it's just really cool to hear that sort of feedback from, from people and parents and kids and, and uh, the community. Yeah. What do you think of some of the other major takeaways from the game that, that children and people of all ages learn? Well, one of the crazy, I'll start with a story. Um, we did hear recently of a grandparent who was playing with his um, uh, two grandchildren um, and then the mom and dad, dad as well. And a couple of weeks after they played, the grandfather went off and started mining Bitcoin himself from being interested and started learning from, from playing genre. So if you want to take it that far and <laughs> start, start going down the actual mining rabbit hole, like, that's awesome. Um, one thing we always say is one of the goals is whether, you know, let's say you're a four-year-old and you're playing and maybe it's not another 10 years before you um, hear the word Bitcoin again for whatever mm-hmm. reason. Mm-hmm. If just the simple fact that they remember, oh, you know, when I grew up, when I was a kid, I was playing a game like Shamri or reading a book like Goodnight Bitcoin. If it lends that that sense of comfort Mm -hmm. when they then hear Bitcoin again, or they get their first wallet, or they do a lightning transaction for the first time, um, it's really around that that awareness um, and comfort level. um, That's really key for us and and a lot of what we're building since we're not trying to get super technical. We're just trying to let that, that bare bones, like have fun become comfortable. It's not anything that's scary. Anybody can do it. You don't need to know a single thing to play the game or read the book. 
um, and then you know see where it takes you naturally. Right. And this game is STEM authenticated. Yeah. Yep. That's that's correct. STEM authenticated. We actually were um, earlier at the beginning of the year. Newsweek magazine named it best of STEM 2021. Um, so very for those wow. who are in the traditional um, uh, classroom or school or STEM centers, um, it is something that could be weaved into that curriculum as well. Yeah. How is the difficulty adjustment uh, addressed in the game? Yeah. So you do it a few different ways. I guess we have to show it. Um, when you start the game, you can choose ultimately how hard you, you want to make it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when you lay down those nonce cards, you start by putting one difficulty adjustment turned over as well. If the player flips that one over, they have to put another one down. So essentially it's making their, uh, there's more nonces on the table. So it's harder to find the ones that you're actually trying to mine. Um, so there's ways you can kind of uh, play around with that. Yeah. And what has your experience been like uh, at meetups and things of that nature, bringing the game along? Yeah. yeah, the feedback has been incredible. I would say that's probably one of my favorite things. Well, absolutely is one of my favorite things about just being out and meeting people in the Bitcoin community is how well received the products have been, but also how valuable the relationships and how like meaningful and true the relationships are that we're building. Um, so we've been going to meetups. We've only been to a few actually because of, you know, when we launched during COVID there, there weren't a lot of uh, get together events, but since that uh, we have been to a few meetups and the, you know, we're there, we're showing the game, we're selling the game, we're meeting with people. It's been, it's been incredible. Um, we've also been to a couple different conferences, same type of feedback. And one of the things that I love is when we're at a conference and a parent or a aunt, uncle, whoever it is, or just a, just an adult with no kids that happens to somebody will come up to the table and they'll say like, Hey, I'm not, I'm not here to buy it because I already bought it online, but I just wanted to tell you like how much fun it brought to our kids or like how me and my friends started like playing. And then my friends started finally talking to me about Bitcoin and it was a good conversation starter. So the feedback has been incredible. Um, And actually if anybody's listening, who is running meetups, uh, we just started doing um, wholesale. So if you're looking to Mm. uh, fundraise for your meetup, which is what we're hearing. People want to buy pizza. They want to buy beer, whatever it is for their meetup. Um, we're doing some bulk purchasing at um, wholesale rates. So we're happy to to talk about that privately. You can, you know, email or DM us on social media. Yeah, I'll be in touch over that. I'm going to go to the Chicago Bit Devs meetup next month. I'm going to bring a copy okay. of the game anyway. Uh, nice. Maybe we could talk about that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd love to get into. Uh, so the, the game's been out for a while. Uh, maybe we could touch a little bit on uh, what your experience was like at Bitcoin 2021, uh, being there and, and interacting with the community and, and going down with the game. Uh, that was overwhelming. Probably, yeah, the, <laughs> probably the highlight of the, the past year. Um, it was, we were lucky. So going back to the concept of, you know, the community being so open and, and welcome, uh, we've been lucky enough to meet um, and get to know the, the team at Zebedee and, and Mint Gox. Um, so they have the, the big esports area set up over there. And obviously being a small uh, group of just the two of us, we mm-hmm. weren't, aren't able to fundraise to get a table ourselves, you know, go through that process. But they they welcomed into us into their area, uh, allowed us to set up, and um, it was uh, a crazy experience. Like Mallory said, not only people coming over to, to purchase at the time it was just the game because the book wasn't out yet, um, purchase the game, but also people just coming over to talk or even um, uh, stepping back from there, other um, companies in the space coming over to learn what we're doing and being interested in working together. So besides. The wholesale side of things, um, we also are um, are open to doing kind of branded versions of the game or the book. So, if you're a company mm. out there, you know, maybe you want to use it as your your swag at the next conference, or to um, uh, to educate your investors or your new mm-hmm. employees or giveaways. But being able to do a special run where your logo can be on the box or the the cover um, as a as a way to to work together as well. And so, um, the the conference um, was probably something that kind of let us know that okay, we. We have more than just a side project here. Um, it, it's small now, but right. there's really a, a, a need in the space and an interest in the space to see where it can all go. Uh, so lucky enough, we'd already had the, the book order on the way and then uh, really driving us into you know what's next for us. And the big thing that's um, evolved since that time is so many people both here in the States and around the world um, starting to build Bitcoin focused curriculum um, and Bitcoin focused curriculum wrapped around Shamari. 
Um, and so that's a really, really cool thing that I think in, in 2022 is going to be one of, if not the top focus that, that we have, um, not necessarily just us building it, but working with these partners and individuals that are doing it. Maybe we can get into that a little bit. Um, there's quite a few partners you guys are working with in quite a few places around the world. Maybe let's we'll start with El Salvador. Yeah, good, very topical. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> since just a, about an hour ago, we got notified that a shipment that we were sending down there landed safely. So oh, good. <laughs> it, it made it. Yes. Um, so one of the people that we met at the conference, um, his name is Carlino. Um, he's part of the IBEX team. Um, so they're doing the great work with the, the Chief of Wallet and the adoption that's going on down there. But besides that, um, Carlino is extremely passionate about education. Mm-hmm. Um, and starting to get it there. So he's been meeting with both schools and churches um, in the El Salvador area um, and starting to help them um, build in curriculum. And so over the coming weeks, um, that's what the shipment was for. He's meeting uh, with a bunch of them. So we sent a bunch down for him to be able to hand out, have them on site uh, to start talking with them. And so, um, yeah, that's a, a project um, that we're, we're excited to see where it can go. Uh, he also has tentacles in um, Guatemala at Bitcoin, Bitcoin Lake. Lake. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, so similar situation. Yep, okay. exactly. And what about uh, Z- Zimbabwe? I think your books made it all the way there. Yeah, they've they yes. have lots of, really, it's all similar situations. Just people starting to, to build mm-hmm. um, curriculum and stuff around it. So um, being able to, to work with them, we're at the beginning stages and, and hopefully um, in, a, in a perfect world, all these things start coming together. So it's not just people uh, building on their own there but we can get the, the translations in place or whatever needs to happen to right. make sure that the curriculum can be shared everywhere because um, there's no point in reinventing the wheel. Yeah. And I think also with Isaiah Jackson and Black, Black Bitcoin Billionaires. Yes. What's, what's that? Yeah. So um, Isaiah used, um, once again, the book was not at the time, but he had his first kids camp um, this past summer back in North Carolina. Um, and so he used the game as part of the curriculum that he built and it went amazing, not only for the game, but just hit the work he was doing in, in, as well, because he's a um, passionate and, and a very uh, educated person around that side of things. And so um, his work now is, is spreading across the nation, particularly in Miami. Um, so there'll be mm. some stuff coming out here um, in the coming weeks, hopefully um, being able to um, work with him as the, the work in Miami kicks off with the um, local after school programs, high schools and colleges that he's going to be reaching into. Um, had the pleasure of actually finally meeting him in person for the first time earlier this week. Um, he was out here in San Diego. So it was nice to, to meet face to face after having conversations sure. with, for, for a year. Yeah, that must have been great. And this year you guys expanded the product line. So we did, yes. Yeah. We okay. came out with Goodnight Bitcoin about August. yeah, August, right? Just a few months ago. Time is flying by. Um, and this product is to fill that gap. Um, kind of like we said that Shamri, you know, really the starting age is probably around four to five, probably closer to five. Um, so you know, that infancy, like zero to to five, really. Uh, we wanted to fill that gap. So Goodnight Bitcoin, which is the story of two little friends, Hal and Satoshi. Um, They go on, they're monsters from the card game. They go on to create a new form of money, which we all know as Bitcoin. Uh, They work together with people all over the world to keep the network running. And then you'll see um, keywords, you know, um, intertwined in between like nodes and, you know, the year that um, it was all, that it all started. So it's a cute book. Um, It's simple. It's easy to read. It's factual. Um, yeah, we've been liking it. Parents have been liking it. And we've been all sorts of tweets of kids. And I actually have a, a fun story that I'll share. Uh, my mom was babysitting our daughter a few months ago um, and she was doing the, the nighttime routine, right? So it involves picking out some books in bed. So our daughter, she has a plethora amount of books and we let her pick out whatever book she wants. And it just so happened that she picked out Goodnight Bitcoin with my mom. And my mom is someone we've tried to talk to Bitcoin about for quite some time. And it's like, you know, way over our head, as I'm sure many people listening can can uh, relate to. But anyway, so she read the the story goes, she read the uh, story to my daughter. She, you know, my daughter went to sleep. We came home. And for the first time ever, my mom started the conversation about Bitcoin to us, mm. which was shocking because generally it's been the other way around. And what she asked was two different things. She asked in the book, there's a monster named Satoshi. Did you guys make up that name or how did you come up with it? 
So that was a great starting point. And then in another point, and one of the lines of the book, it says, and in 2000, and in January, 2009, the first Bitcoin blocks were stacking. And so she was like, oh, did it really start in 2009? Like, I, you know, what is the timeline around that? So it was pretty huge um, for her to, you know, read something so simple and to think about it hours later and then start asking us questions about it. Right. So that was, that was pretty telling. But as a parent, I always, you know, I enjoy reading to my kid as many parents do or grandparents, um, aunts and uncles, but I particularly enjoy reading things that um, are enjoyable for adults to read as well, <laughs> because some of the kids' stories can be just uh, so terrible. So, so it is nice that there is a good, fun adult with like good educational content book out there about Bitcoin. Yeah. I'm sure uh, Orange Pilling, your mother was uh, higher on your bucket list. Um, was, <laughs> is there anyone else, maybe number two uh, in the world that you would want to Orange Pill uh, with Shamari, either the board game or the card game or, or the book? Gosh, I don't know if there's an individual, but as a group of people, whether it's through Sean Marie, which I hope it is, or just through orange pilling in general, I'm motivated and um, I admire the individuals we've had the pleasure of meeting with um, who are working with third world countries, um, allowing them the freedom that they wouldn't otherwise have of all ages, but I'm particularly struck by the work that they're doing, um, you know, in communities with kids and just educating them and allowing them such freedom that they wouldn't otherwise have without Bitcoin. So I'd like to continue orange pilling an entire group and everybody in that group, if that makes sense. But when you think about the work and the lifestyle changes that it can create, you know, it, it really like hits home and it's very inspiring. Yeah. yeah, and we've always taken the as far as the people around us taking the tactic. They obviously know we're interested in it. Um, we have <laughs> they know about Shamari, so when they're interested to come talk to us, we're always more than happy to you know help them go down those questions and down the rabbit hole. Um, but we always found it best like let the people come to you mm -hmm. uh, as far as those closer to you because you don't want to push them too soon or whatever it may be. You know you, right. you don't want that um, weight on your shoulders, but. Um, but yeah, the, the, uh, the groups in those countries are what we're particularly passionate about, or even, you know, whether it's in the country as well, like a lot of the work Isaiah does, um, is in, you know, underserved, mm -hmm. underrepresented communities and these people can need Bitcoin to be able to help get them kind of out of that, that, uh, mm -hmm. really that they're yeah. in. And so just those, those stories and projects are the ones that, um, uh, touch us the most. Yeah, I really think about um, American Hoddle did a talk down at BitBlock Boom. I don't know if you guys got to see it. It was called the Bitcoin Mafia. And it just talked about a little bit about the one time Contalon effect that we're going through now with with Bitcoin. And on the future, uh, you know, Bitcoiners now will be the capital allocators of the future. And, and really got me thinking about how what, what Bitcoin is doing for a lot of people who maybe don't have uh, enough uh, uh, Bitcoin to allocate or go get a yacht. But it's given them the time to be. Uh, to do more or do the things they want to do, but mm -hmm. really in a way it like uh, incentivizes them to work not for Bitcoin as the, the money or the currency, but to work for the network, to evangelize on behalf of the network there. Now that I have this time to do what I want, I want to evangelize and work on behalf of the network. And it's very interesting. I'm kind of curious what Shamari's plans for 2022 are. Yeah, so I guess we've kind of alluded to, to some of it. A lot of it, yeah. I think, will be curriculum. wrapped around the, the curriculum and working with these different partners um, in various ways. So we're extremely excited um, about that. Um, also being like um, being able to kind of keep getting the word out about the products to just all demographics. Like I said, we've done no paid marketing. So just more hard rock mining, letting people learn about us, people talking, you know, you talk to somebody else, et cetera. Um, but besides that, part of the, the reason the game ultimately centered around all these little characters uh, is because we saw those as kind of the, they're the Shamari brand um, and being able mm. to be starting the game, they moved into a book um, and being at the beginning stages of being uh, talking to different people about, okay, what does it look like if they're then turned into a, you know, short movies or right. episodes um, or you know, awesome. what does it look like in, in a video game? Um, so that we see these characters as really being the true asset that can help spread things even farther 
um, in ways that don't even have to be talking about Bitcoin. So maybe it's just a show that's about concepts that are um, semi-related to Bitcoin, like, okay, learning about being trustworthy and learning about uh, working together. And, you know, maybe the, the word Bitcoin doesn't even come up in it, but these characters have, there's a, there's kind of semi-references to what it is that, that can help kind of bring that awareness and comfort level. So it doesn't even have to be as, quote, you know, in your face Bitcoin as um, just kind of letting these things naturally seep into to where they're going. So those are the, some of the projects that we're, we're excited about. Obviously, like we mentioned before, working with whether it's meetups and doing wholesale things, um, or also the, the larger companies who may be interested in um, doing branded stuff. There's some um, companies in the mining space that we've talked to that um, have explored interests. So those are obviously top of the line as well. Yeah. I wonder, being married to fellow Bitcoiners, uh, is it ever too much Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's ever too much Bitcoin. It's it's actually been wonderful um, working together through this company. You know, when we started this, we wanted to do something, you know, we were inspired by our daughter and we wanted to do something to educate her. But we really had no idea um, how much how what the potential of it would be and how positive the feedback from the market would be and as it's grown you know pretty exponentially over the past year it's been really fun to work with your you know your spouse to do so so yep. it's no. been you know at night boxing doing boxes or doing these podcasts together like it's a fun way to continue bonding um yeah. it just happens to be over the business as well and i guess it's probably um in some ways, less Bitcoin talk and just more Shamari talk. So it's, it's, Bitcoin, <laughs> That's true. it's Bitcoin, but it's like, okay, you know, how many, you know, what boxes are we packing? You know, what's the website, you know, website you know. Or, you know <laughs> who's dropping off the orders? That's right. Exactly. That's Lots of trips to the post office we have every day. Yeah. Scott, having gone down the rabbit hole first, do you remember maybe what it was that, or some of the things that kind of uh, gave you conviction or aha moments or what you really liked about Bitcoin to start? Yeah, I think it was um, kind of like a reference before. Part of it was kind of that accounting brain where I understood uh, once I started understanding the difference between Bitcoin and everything else um, really helped me say, OK, that's where the separation is. So that was kind of step one. And then it was just, you know, being active on Bitcoin Twitter, seeing the amount of um, what do you want to call them? Intelligent people, smart people, um, recognized people, people with um, some sort of, you know, um, uh, uh, prestige that are out there coming into the space. Um, it just kind of lets you say, okay, these people know where this is headed. Um, it's not going to happen overnight, obviously, which you have to be comfortable with. Right. Uh, but you just need to follow that. Um, and also, like I said before, if you don't think the world is only going to become more digital and not less, then uh, it's really as simple as that in some ways. Like that's the direction we're all heading. Um, and so there's going to be a, a growth uh, on something that has a, you know, a limited supply and increased demand. I mean, that that's just very simple math. Yeah. And it seems you guys uh, kind of picked up on it pretty quick. What about you, Mallory? Was there kind of anything in particular that you learned about along the way that uh, kind of was maybe a, a light bulb moment for you or... Just I don't know if there was one light bulb moment, but it's been learning all along the way. And I continue to, to still learn, you know, I'm um, always struck by the people who we do podcasts with and their knowledge or the people that I meet with meetups, um, you know, people who we've met virtually and then become friends with um, Daniel Prince, you know, started off as a podcast we were listening to, and now we consider him, yeah. you know, a great friend. And I consider him someone very educated in the space of, of Bitcoin and in education, which is something else that I'm uh, particularly interested in. So I don't know if there was a light bulb moment, but I continue to learn. And that's kind of the thing that I like about Bitcoin is that there's always things to be continuing learning. You know, I'm sure there's people out there who know it all, but that it, it's not me. <laughs> it's not many of us, I don't think. Has uh, Bitcoin changed you guys in any way? I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I guess one change coming up here in uh, a few weeks is I'll actually be leaving my job at Journeys Map to, to focus on memory uh, full time going into 2022. So that's obviously a, a big leap for us as a, a family. Like you mentioned, we have a toddler, she's two. Um, and so being able to, um, leave a job that you've been at for, for 13 years and the sense of security that comes with that obviously is a, a drastic change to going and doing something that 
um, obviously isn't replacing your income income on day one, um, but you know that as a couple, um, we see, okay, we have the ability to, to see where this can go. Um, if we don't see where it can go, that, that would probably be a regret, a regret that we won't, don't want to take. Um, and um, having, um, like I said, that really one of the tipping points was being in Miami and, and seeing the, the interest there um, over the past, uh, from then into now is really been, okay, you know, this is, this is only picking up steam. Um, it needs to deserve our full attention in, in one way or another. And so that's probably the, it's a rather big change <laughs> that, that's happening uh, for us as a couple. Yeah. So. I, yeah. I would say that um, yeah, Bitcoin is an understanding Bitcoin and um, the freedom that it can allow an, an individual. Um, I would say that's really opened up my mind in a way that it, my mind really wasn't open uh, before getting down this rabbit hole and meeting all of these people. Um, because I think Scott kind of touched on this earlier, but you know, like education and uh, printed money, it's something that's so old and it really hasn't been updated in quite some time. So I was, you know, someone in that same system, like I went down, you know, a very traditional education route and was like very comfortable with money in a bank. And when I started thinking bigger than that, and realizing the potential, um, you know, I kind of applied it to other things. And now I'm kind of rethinking like traditional education for our daughter. Like, is that something we want to put her in? It might not be. Um, and it involves, you know, it involves like critically thinking and um, taking a step back and realizing things that are just around and have been around for a long time might not be the best things. So it's opened my mind to, you know, to other things, unschooling, um, homeschooling, just other non-traditional things. Yeah, I can relate on a lot of those fronts. I just recently left my fiat day career. I don't call it a day job. It was a career <laughs> I was doing it for a long time, a little over 20 years. And uh, yeah, as my family's going through a similar situation. Uh, we're not going to replace all the income on day one. And but, uh, we want to make the most of this opportunity. And I want to focus my time on uh, Bitcoin related projects as well as the podcast. Um, I wonder if you guys have any uh, advice for Bitcoin couples or maybe a Bitcoin, uh, maybe a, a, a husband or a wife who their spouse is not into Bitcoin yet? Well, one is get the game or the book. That's one great way to uh, to orange pill. Yeah. We actually have that, heard that story. We've many, heard many this times. many times. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say that. People have come up to our tables at events and have said like, oh, this is finally the way I'm going to talk to my husband or wife. Um, and they've had no interest at all in talking about Bitcoin, but at least they'll sit down and play a card game with me. So we've heard that many times. Yeah. And there is drinking games and uh, instructions out there as well. So you can turn it into a drinking game to, to even liven it up more from there. Um, but I guess besides that, um, it would be, you know, come at, if it's your husband or your wife um, or even a, a significant other uh, that you've known for a while, you obviously know where their, their passion or interest lies in general, not just Bitcoin related, but kind of the triggers behind them. Um, and so whether it's somebody who's going to be motivated by seeing, you know, the number go up making money versus somebody who's going to be motivated by hearing about what's going on education wise in places, you know, around the world um, versus, you know, uh, being able to name off the other things, find that interest um, and kind of start with that angle um, and see where that gets you. And then obviously, you know, take it slow. Nobody's going to dive hundred percent on day one, um, nor would you really want them to because they probably wouldn't uh, understand it properly. But I would say that that's the tactic that um, uh, would probably work best. Just kind of find that interest that he or she has um, and relate it back to Bitcoin because 99.9% .9 of the time, you could probably find some way to tie it back in. Awesome. I don't know if you want to add any words to that, Mallory. I don't know if I have anything to add. That was pretty well done. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm going to just take you back and say that. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been incredible. I, 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 I love learning about Shamari and, and the, the different products. I look forward to the feature film yes. in 2022 or 2023. <laughs> I love the character, especially how you named him Hal and Satoshi. And it's a sweet little story. And it a, looks like a beautiful book. I love the artwork and that you continued the characters from one line to the other. So please let everyone know where they could find you and, and the book and the card game. Yeah, please visit us on our website, uh, Shamari, so S-H-A-M-O-R-Y.com. That's where you can buy uh, the card game, the book. And we recently partnered with 
Sats Ledger, and you can also buy that. We have a bundle deal. You can buy all three of them and uh, one purchase for you. We just started selling on Amazon, but only the card game, but the card game is available on Amazon. And then you can also find us on Twitter at Play Sean Marie or Scott's personal Twitter account. Uh, Scott M. Sibley. So DMs are open in all those spots. So I'm easy to get a hold with to be able to, to connect and explore ideas. And I uh, we did also make a um, 10% off code for anybody interested. Mm-hmm. So Bitcoin, Bitcoin Matrix 10 um, through the website. We'll give anybody 10% off. So get those holiday orders in and we'll, we'll pack it as fast as possible to, to be able to have some nice stocking stoppers um, or under the tree for everybody or any other holiday you're, you're celebrating. That is awesome. Uh, it's a great gift, I think, for the holidays, for sure. And a great way to orange people. I think, uh, I, you know, I, I think that it's a great way to orange pill adults, uh, as you were alluding to before. Uh, it's a great gift for the kids, but the adults are obviously going to either read it first or along with them. And, you know, I think that's a great way to just uh, orange pill both generations or, or many generations, I should say, too. But um, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate this. It's been great. Thank you for having us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Scott and Mallory Silby on the first and only STEM authenticated Bitcoin card game, Goodnight Bitcoin the Book and the Movie, right here on the Bitcoin Matrix podcast. This episode was brought to you by Ledin, Bitcoin Magazine, and the Bitcoin Conference. Ledin.io is a secure, simple, and easy to use platform for managing and growing your digital wealth. If you want to see what it's all about and get $50 free in USDC when you take out your first Ledin loan, head over to start.ledin.io forward slash Bitcoin Matrix. Last year, over 10,000 Bitcoiners came to celebrate Bitcoin at Bitcoin 2021. But for the Bitcoin conference next April, they're expecting tens of thousands of rabid Bitcoiners. The Bitcoin conference is going to be a celebration of Bitcoin, Bitcoiners, and this amazing movement that is going to make the world a better place. I hope to see you there and grab that beer. For 10% off, use the code BitcoinMatrix before prices go up and or sell out. And remember to use the code BitcoinMatrix10 at shamari.com for 10% off your order. Finally, thank you for listening. If you dig the Bitcoin Matrix, please subscribe, rate, write a five-star review, and share with your friends and family. Upcoming shows include conversations with Vijay Boyapati, CJ Wilson, Mind Over Matter, and Alex Gladstein. Stack sats, stay humble, and stay laser-focused. This is Cedric. Peace.